uh, I'm going to go from that really important foundational grounding into why healthcare and you, and then from there, how to talk about some of these issues based on some additional research we've had. Uh, I want to name before I do that, that I do not live and swim in the spaces that you are in, and that all of this is guidance that you can tailor towards your spaces and towards your patients and the conversations with your clients. The first piece uh, that I want to talk through is <clears throat> why you? Why healthcare professionals? Why this particular special messenger that holds weight, as we heard from Maya? And the first part of the answer to this question is that we are in a time where trust in democracy is incredibly low. And if we're going to break that cycle, in addition to the constant reminders that Maya mentioned, we're also going to need to introduce a novel and unique messenger. It turns out that healthcare professionals, including nurses, doctors, pharmacists, are among the top most trusted professionals in America and have been for a number of years, and that that trust has grown over the course of the pandemic. And that this creates a unique opportunity for a different type of messenger with a very unique relationship with their patient to have a conversation about voting. And we know from the data that when nonprofits like hospitals and clinics engage with people on voting, that it works. What this graph shows you is on the left, a set of comparable voters in the general voting population, and on the right, those who were approached by their nonprofit about voting. And you see that particularly amongst voters of color, there's a dramatic increase in voter turnout when that uh, recommendation and reminder about voting is coming from a nonprofit who they trust. And this is further reinforced in the health space. Uh, one of our partners, Altamed, who a number of you are getting to interact with by virtue of your work in the Community Civic Engagement Program, um, did this work a number of years ago in 2018 and actually had some evaluators come look at it. And this is a, a community health center network that is in Southern California that reaches across a number of Latino communities. And what they found was that as a health organization, when they were the ones reaching out to their patients, for every 1% of people who they reached, there was an 8% increase in that precinct's turnout as a result of that intervention. And so what we see from this is that y'all are a uniquely powerful messenger uh, when you combine the effect of being part of trusted nonprofit organizations with being a particularly trusted messenger as a health messenger. So given that, the next question is, okay, trusted messenger, we know this works, what can make it really effective? And a part of the answer to that is how you talk about voting with your patients. When we talk about voting, there are a number of people who are going to feel cynical. They're gonna feel like the system hasn't heard them. And there's a set of language that we have worked on with a black owned polling firm that really focuses on the pieces that help re-engage people in why they should vote and exercise their political power. And that's what I wanna walk you through is some of the, the do's and where to focus when you are having these conversations. To get us started, I wanna show you some evidence around this. Uh, this polling firm works primarily with Black, Latino, and young voters to really unpack and understand how they talk about voting and how they talk about their political power. And what they did is they ran a survey. This was a survey in Georgia, and it picked the question, what responsibility would have the most impact on your life for a local elected official? And they ran through a number of elected officials, and here are some of the things that make the top of the list for these elected officials. Distributing resources to cities in Georgia. Increasing Georgia's minimum wage from $5.15 an hour. Securing resources for their state. These are the types of things that when voters are thinking, and this was a, a survey specifically of Black voters, when they are thinking about what makes it worthwhile for them to show up in an election, Thinking about resources, resources, and resources is kind of a critical piece. So that is the key word in many of these conversations. Now, what we did with this group is we said, okay, if resources are the critical piece, how do we translate that into something that each of our health professionals can use? And through our work with uh, this polling firm, we created a set of conversation starters. And you can access those conversation starters straight from our website and go to the drop down under resources and go to conversation starters. And we've built these for a wide range of different environments and perspectives. And you can choose the ones that are most effective for you. Now, I want to remind you, I am not a health professional. 
what we can do in this space is break down the anatomy of what these types of conversations can look like. And then you can adapt them to your spaces based on what you know about your patients and what you know about the topics that are particularly top of mind of them as it relates to resources coming to their community. So as we talk through this, there's gonna be a piece that I speed through, which is the opening, just the prompt. Are you registered to vote? Or I want to check if you're registered to vote at your current address. And then there's the part that will be the dialogue piece where we framed it as a chunk, but really you'll be breaking it up into questions and dialogue with the person who you're speaking with. And then finally, there'll be a prompt to take action. And the key piece to emphasize here is how fast and simple our system is to use and how much we provide additional resources if people need them through the system. So those will be the three different areas of the script as you'll see that we go through. The first script can work for pretty much any voter who's eligible to vote. And it really focuses on that previous piece on resources and power. And so after the general opening, um, prompting the patient to think about voter registration and going from there, the dialogue here talks about power, that voting is a powerful tool to address the improve the issues you care about, like your health, that local elections are often decided by a small number of voters and that that impact on your community is therefore immediate. And that through your vote, you have a say on issues like prices of medication, like the cost of health insurance that affect your friends and family. And the reason that friends and family is so important is that when we talk about voting, people do care how voting impacts them. They care even more about how voting affects their community and the people around them. And so it, leaning into that friends and family uh, frame is a really important part of what we're doing here. And then finally, of course, the closing being all you have to do is point your badge and text this number, and then that it walks you through every step of the process. So this is a script that can work with uh, any, any voter that you, that you talk with, and it can be your default and your go-to. Talk about power, talk about resources, talk about how small numbers of votes can make a difference. One of the most incredible groups of voters that VODIAR has the opportunity to, to partner with are young voters. Um, and part of the reason we're so lucky to be able to do so much of that work is that the biggest group of health professionals in VODIAR are pediatricians. And there are two audiences that pediatricians reach. They reach young voters and then they reach their parents. And on this page, we'll talk a little bit about what it's like to talk with a young voter. Um, and at age 18, these voters at a particular moment where their bodies are changing, their agency is changing, and this is a moment to begin a habit that can become a lifelong habit as a part of that transition into adulthood. Again, starting the same, wanting to check if you're eligible to vote and registered at your current address. As a young person, you have more power than you might think. Building on the collective, in 2020, voters like you made history and set voting records and your vote allows you to create the change that you wanna see in your community, diffusing the sense of cynicism that can often come um, from the experiences that people have had in their, their lived lives. And then it, once again, talking about how simple and easy it is to engage them and using technology so that it is something suitable for a young voter to engage on. And then there is the parent. And um, the parent is another really powerful uh, person in this. And we actually know that the parents of newborns vote at lower rates than other other folks um, because it is harder to access um, the vote when you are uh, supporting a newborn. And um, this is another group that an audience that pediatricians who are part of ODR can speak with. Same opening. As a parent, I bet you are looking forward to the future of your child's education and health care. The politicians who make the laws are going to do so based on the preferences of the people who vote for them, including on these issues. And therefore, your vote allows you to help create the changes you want to see for your children. Tapping into that, uh, again, community as the, the key unit that people are trying to make change for, um, and then driving on the resources and power that are created there. If somebody is a frequent voter, this is a gift. When they're a frequent voter, sometimes we have the instinct to say, oh, well, then you're good. I, I don't need to, to mention this to you. But actually, the gift of the frequent voter is to tell them to engage every other person who they know because it is much more powerful for people to hear from their friends who they trust about voting than it is for them to hear from a cold phone call from a campaign about voting. So with these voters, you really wanna emphasize that this is one of the most important things that they can be doing. 
and to encourage them to talk with their friends and family to make sure that they are also having their voices heard and that they will trust them more because of their position as friends and family in this work. Um, another group that we've often heard about is undocumented voters. We're actually uh, catching up to record a segment with Altamed, um, who works with a lot of uh, undocumented folks. Um, and uh, the way that we've had them tell us how to work with undocumented folks is to remind them that that means that the people around them who vote have a really, really powerful say in what impacts them. Um, and so it's extremely important for them to talk to other people in their community about voting. And then for the skeptical voter, really focusing on there are a small number of votes that can determine the impact of really, really consequential and important elections, and also putting it back in their court, trying not to over persuade without giving them the chance to look and research and explore it themselves. So I asked you to bring your badge. If you have on your badge, if you have on the back something that says why vote, I'd love for you to go ahead and scan it. If you don't, that's totally okay and I'll explain in just a moment. Sometimes you're running from room to room and it may take too long to explain to a, a patient who's not sure why they should vote. You can point them to the back of the badge and there is an explainer um, using the same language and, and paradigm as before on the importance of our vote and why our vote is powerful. And if you have a, a older badge or you don't have this, it'll soon be incorporated straight into the front of the badge and that'll be rolled out probably within the next month or so. Uh, and I am going to stop screen share and do a quick role play with Yuri um, doing something that we did actually just a few weeks ago in Arizona. And so the story here is we did our uh, site visit um, to Arizona to a couple community health centers that we work with. And the same conversation you're about to hear actually happened in real life. Um, and I wanna uh, share it with you just now. Uh, all right, uh, this is again, this, this actually happened. Um, and so Yuri and I are gonna try and repeat the thing that actually happened um, uh, as best as we can. So I am somebody coming into a community health center where um, I often receive um, various services and um, I'll kick this off. Hi, Dr. Baker. I'm uh, here to get my, my food from the pantry today. I'm, I'm excited to see you. Hi, Alia, how are you? I'm, I'm okay, Dr. Baker, I'm doing okay. That's good. I see you got your food uh, today. Now, let me ask you something. Are you registered to vote? Oh, that sounds cool, Dr. Baker, but I'm not interested in that sort of thing. Well, why not? Dr. Baker, I don't, I don't do politics. I don't believe in that politics stuff. Can I ask why? Dr. Baker, big government hasn't done anything for me. I have voted and voted and just nothing seems to change. Well, I understand that. And many Americans feel the same way. And that's why it's so important that our voices are heard. So I always tell people to act locally, but think globally. So when we act locally, when we vote our mayor in, we vote our sheriff in, when we vote for the people on our school board, we are making change. That's why it matters. Now, do you know if you're registered to vote? Oh, I don't even remember. Can we can we check? Yeah, let's flip over this uh, this badge here and we can check your status. We can uh, register you to vote and there's even a place to ask questions. Thank you, Dr. Baker. I appreciate that. Of course. 